My name is Jared Roxburgh. I've done the film Once I Was a Champion. I was uh, going to be a professional fighter at the age of 21 and uh, I blew out my knee and decided to go back to film school. And while I was in film school, I started reading the blog of a former world champion named Devin Tanner. And his blog had nothing to do about MMA. I thought I was going to get some motivation for training, but it was actually more about his alcohol problems. And I reached out to him and asked him if I could do a documentary uh, about him sobering back up and getting back into the, the big leagues. And he was really keen on the idea. And then my uncle died back in Scotland. So I went over to Scotland and made a film about my uncle. And by the time I got back, Evan had moved on and he shortly passed away thereafter. And it was a bit of a mystery in the mixed martial arts community how he died, whether or not it was, what with, with, with the intentions were, whether or not it was suicide or, or uh, you know, if it was a big accident. So I felt that I needed to go out there and, and start interviewing people and trying to figure out the answer to that. I come from a pretty rough neighbourhood in Scotland and uh, it always kept me off the streets, you know, like being involved in, in fighting. It's a positive influence in my life and Evan was definitely a guy that embodied that spirit. He was down and out for a while and he would crash on different fans' couches because he, he never had a place to stay. But once he got back to the big leagues and he got his money, uh, rather than just being selfish and spend it on himself, he decided to go on a fan appreciation tour where he would just ride his Harley into a city and, and post it on MySpace. And if you're in that city and you wanted to go to lunch, he would take you to lunch if you were a fan of his. He was never the type of guy that when he won, he would he would celebrate really big. He would, he would just uh, very humbly, you know, accept the win. And so uh, one of the guys in the film actually puts it that Evan, the one thing that Evan didn't like about fighting is that somebody had to lose. And, and I, I thought that was a very interesting subject matter for, for being a fighter. When I first started out, I had Evan's sister. I contacted her and she was interested in, in what I wanted to do. And so it was a little bit easier when I was calling people and saying, hey, you know, I've got Evan's sister um, kind of on board. And uh, then it just started, you know, steamrolling from there. And then when I got talking to his sister, I found out that his sister never really knew him all that well. Uh, Evan traveled from town to town and being an alcoholic, he, he burned a lot of bridges and he moved from city to city and, and, and nobody got to spend a long period of time with him. So I thought an interesting, compelling story would be a story about his sister getting to know her brother better, you know, after his death. But I found out from doing the interviews that Evan's story was enough to carry the documentary on its own and uh, the story with the sister wasn't materialising the way that I thought it would. So we kind of switched directions. In post-production, I started with about 250 hours worth of footage. So there was uh, 100, 100 interview, about 100 B-roll and maybe 50 uh, archival footage. So it was a challenge to say the least of how I'm going to structure a story. So I, I tried to look at Evan's life as a three-act structure and his, his, his you know, his reversals and, and his his turning points in his life and, and I, I flash carded that out and and then found key subjects that, that the the people would keep talking about, whether it was his championship fight or, you know, his his drinking or his boat sink and he lived on a boat for a while and his boat sank and that was a big huge metaphor for his life. And I I, I labelled all these on, on uh, index cards and structured the structured a three-act story around it and, and followed that through, throughout the course of the editing. I think that the film turned out how I expected it to. Uh, I, I thought there would be more archival footage that I'd be able to acquire, but the more I got to know about Evan, the more I realised that it was very hard for him to open up on camera. Evan's character was really told through his friends. It ended up being more interesting that way because I feel that here you have 50 people being interviewed and they're making up a portrait of a man that you see very little of throughout the entire film. There's three different companies that he fought for that, uh, that I got licensing for. Uh, one was uh, the USWF, which was his, the first organization he was in, and I contacted the, the guy that owned that and kind of did a little deal for him because it was the footage was so old that he needed it converted on a DVD, so I said I would do all that for him if he could let me use the footage, and we just made a deal like that. His second footage was all from Japan. He was fighting in uh, an organization called Pancreas, and we licensed that footage for probably about five fights for about $5,000, um, which was pretty cool. And then the UFC footage was really an interesting story. Uh, the UFC don't license footage to anybody. It's just their, their MO. They just do not license footage to anybody. And so I called everybody at the UFC and got told no probably about 50 times. And uh, I wanted to have Dana White involved in the project. Dana White's the president of the UFC because he knew Evan as well. And, Dana's never done a documentary before, he doesn't do those type of interviews. So 
I just got told by everybody, no, 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 we're not even going to ask him. And then when I ended up going to Thailand, I got put in a bungalow next to the producer of the Ultimate Fighter TV show, coincidentally. And I got talking to him and he saw my trailer that I had at the time. And he was like, I'll talk to Dana for you. And then a week later, I'm sitting in Dana's, you know, Dana's office doing an interview with him. And then it kind of went smooth sailing from there. I, uh, I found out about the Arclight Festival uh, through the Without a Box, which is great because when I, uh, when I initially wanted to screen this film privately to the MMA community and the MMA media and the people that were in the film, I came to the Arclight and I wanted to host a screening there and it was slightly out of our budget at the time. So it's really great that I get the opportunity to screen at such a prestigious theatre. Just in closing, I'd like to just say that I, I think it's a great honour to be involved in this festival and uh, you know, I hope I can meet some people that I work with in the future or you know, meet some cool people I could just be friends with, I think. Uh, part of my film is that one person can really impact a lot of people's lives. Evan impacted these 50 different people's lives who may not know each other, but through my film, now they're friends. And it's really been a steamroll effect for my life as well because I made a lot of genuine friendships through this film. And uh, that's the beauty of a documentary. With a